Okay, so in some previous videos, we discussed that there are multiple types of queries. What I don't think we adequately discussed is the fact that with any one type of query, you can get substantially different results based on the join that you use. Now, there's always a join involved. It's just that there's a default join. So what you can do is when you create the query, you can then modify, you can select what join you want to use, and that will alter the results. So let's take a look at why you would want to use the different type of joins and what the results would look like. So the main reason why you would have different types of joins is because not every record in one table will have a corresponding record in the other table. So maybe one table is a customer table. Think of a company like Amazon. You go to the site and you create an account, but you never actually make any purchases. So you would be in the customer table, but if they run a query comparing the customers against say a transaction table, there would be no transactions. There'd be no purchases. There'd be presumably no returns. So that's an example where you would want to have different types of joins. You'd look to see which customers have transactions and which customers don't have transactions. Suppose you could also look to see which transactions don't have customers, but you'd have a serious problem if you have transactions without a registered customer. So let's take a look at our data here. We have an employee active and an assignment active. So this is kind of like a transaction table, the assignment active. This is what they are currently doing. This is where they are currently deployed. So we can open this up and you can see that you have a badge number and where they're deployed. Why would you have just a badge number? Maybe it's sensitive. And so you don't want to have an actual name listed here. The other table we're gonna look at is an employee table. So in this case, you have employee name, badge number, and a security level. So what you want is you want to see what deployment each employee is, is doing, where they are located. And so clearly, as you can see, badge number is represented in both tables. So that is where you would compare the two tables. And that is where you're gonna say what type of join you're using. I just want to take a moment to point out that even though it's spelled differently, that is completely and utterly irrelevant. It does not matter. So it's not looking at the name of the column. It's going to look for the values in the column. So it is possible that if for some reason you have two, uh, two columns that have entirely different purposes but have overlap in values, you could actually get false matches. So make sure you are definitely comparing the right uh, values. I'll give you an example. Say a company assigns a nine digit number as an employee or a customer identifier. Well, guess what else also has nine digits? Social security numbers. So you could compare one to the other and get false matches. Okay, so let's continue. What we're gonna do we're going to want to see what the current assignment of the active employees are. So let's go up to create. We'll go to query design. Again, I'm going to get rid of this. I just think it's clutter. You can use it if you want, but it's easy enough to drag and drop from here. We're going to take employee active here. I'm going to take assignment active here. Now I'm going to click on the top one, hold shift, click on the bottom one, and that selects everything. And then we just drag that down here. So we have employee name, badge number, and security level. We want to know what their current deployment is. We left click badge number and click it on badge num. And again, the, the fact that the tables have different names, uh, excuse me, that the columns have different names, completely irrelevant. What matters are the values within that column. So again, be careful, make sure you're comparing it to the same data. Again, the example of a nine-digit employee number or a nine-digit customer number, if you compare that to a social security number, you're going to get bad data. 
because they both have nine digits. Okay, so we have employee name, badge number, security level, and what we want is current deployment. Now you could say, wait a minute, why aren't you grabbing badge number? Well, we already have badge number, but we will come back to that in a few minutes. So that's the basics of a query that we've already discussed and we'll run it. You take this and you say, here you go, who's over asking, here's the results. And they could see that these are the employees and here's the current deployment. Now here's the problem. Where's 102? Where's 106? You don't know there's a 106 unless you went back to the table, but there are values that are missing. This, by default, is what's known as an inner join. So the example I've already seen explaining the way why it's called an inner or an outer join. Let's go back to design view. So I clicked on view, went to design view. If you think of these not as tables so much as circles, this is a big circle and this is a big circle. They overlap in the middle. That would be the inner part. This is by default an inner join. So this is only the overlapping fields. So what if you want to know who doesn't have an assignment? That would be a left outer join. And again, if you think of a left and a right circle, the overlap is the inner, and therefore you have the outer on the left and the outer on the right. How do you get to it? It's kind of silly. See this line that's really thin? You actually have to click on this. You right click and you choose join properties. It doesn't use the terminology here, but this is the inner join. So like I said, there's always been a join, you just didn't realize it. So if you click on number two, include all records from employee active, employee active, and only those records from assignment where the join fields are equal. So we click on OK. Now we're going to run this and you're going to see how the results are different. See this? Now you have all the records from employee active because you're missing 102 and you're missing 106. So what you've done is you've given them two bits of information now. You've given them the current deployment, but you've also told them which ones are not being deployed. Maybe no one realized they weren't deployed and now you can utilize these assets. You can utilize these employees and send them out on their mission. So again, it depends what the requester is looking for. Do they truly just care about the ones that are out on deployment or do they want to see who doesn't have a deployment? So that would be the left out of join. And that leaves just one more. So we'll come back to view and we'll come back to design. Now this one is going to be the right out of join. So again, this one's right and you're going to be looking for the outer information. So you again click on this, right click, join properties, include all records from assignment active and only those records from employee active where the join field are equal. So you click on OK. Now what should happens here? Suddenly we have these two extra that are supposedly out in Spain and North America. So this is what I was talking about at the beginning where we don't have badge number listed twice because it'd be redundant. Well, the problem is since we don't have badge number, how do we track these people down? So let's go back to view, go back to design view, grab badge number, and you can just drag and drop it. You can put it at the end. You can just drag and drop it anywhere in the middle. Let's put it in the middle here and we run. So now what you've got is you have all the deployments and the ones that are have deployments but for some reason are not an employee name. So that's three different data sets that we looked at. One, we looked at the overlapping fields only. We looked at employee name and, or should I say, employee the records from employee active and where they matched assignment active. So 
only matching for both. If it's an employee active and it's an assignment active, those are the results. The second was give me everything from employee active, even if it doesn't have assignment active. So you now have everything from employee active and the ones that match an assignment active. So now I can see which employees don't have assignments. And then the third one is give me everything from assignment active and the ones from employee active that match. And so in that case, you can find the ones where people have an assignment, but for some reason aren't in the database. So maybe these are old assignments that were never closed out. There's badge numbers that don't match up. So there could be a reason why this is here. This could be bad data or it could be a bigger problem. So those are the three types. So only where there's a match, everything plus the matching, everything plus the matching. So the left and right outer join are very similar. It's just which table are you getting the entire value from? So again, you could use this for say transactions. You could use this for a customer table and a transaction table. Although in the case of transactions, uh, I'm not sure how you would do the right out of join because I'm not sure how you'd have a transaction, but no um, employ. Uh, but if it's say for customers, I'm not sure how you'd have a transaction without a customer. It's possible maybe somehow the customer record was deleted. So I'm not saying it wouldn't happen. Uh, it just seems a little bit odd. But again, maybe that's the kind of thing that you're checking for. Okay, so I think that about does it for this one. If you have any questions, let me know. But those are the three types of joins, the inner join, the left outer, and the right outer. Any questions, just let me know.